Hello everyone, my name is Emily and today we're going to be talking about label language, specifically decoding the nutrition labels. To start with our disclaimer, this information is being provided in order to increase your awareness. It is not intended to be medical advice. If you believe that you may have any medical conditions or have spe specific questions regarding your health, see your physician. So we're going to start with defining what a nutrition facts label is. We likely all looked at the nutrition label on our foods before. So we know that it provides information about the calories, the number of servings, and the nutrition contents like um, sugar, fat, sodium, fiber, and a couple of other things on there. So this nutrition label can be used to make healthy choices when you're grocery shopping just to choose the best option for you. So to start a little bit of, of a discussion here, I want you to think about for a moment what nutrition information you pay attention to when and if you look at that nutrition label. So for me personally, when I look at the nutrition label, I pay attention to the serving size, the calories, the carbohydrates, and the added sugars. And some of us may know already what our, how to look at a nutrition label, um, but we're going to look a bit closer on how to read one. So we want to look at um, the serving size, check out the total calories, look at the nutrients, let the percent daily values be your guide, and review the ingredient list. So step one is to check the serving size and identify what is in the food. So all the information on the label is based on one serving, but serving items may have more than one serving in the whole package. So you want to look at the number of servings that are in the package and then compare your portion size. So the amount that you're actually eating to the serving size that's listed on the label. Then step two is to check the total calories. So when we talk about calories, we're referring to the total number of calories or energy supplied from all sources, including carbs, proteins, fats, and alcohols in one serving of the food. Then you'll find out how many calories are in a single serving. But remember, this number is for one single serving on the nutrition label, so you need to adjust the number of calories for smaller or, or larger portions. And then next, you want to check the nutrients included on the food. Now remember, all values are based on consuming one serving of the food. Um, the nutrition that that are listed on the label include total fat, cholesterol, sodium, carbs, proteins, and our vitamins and minerals. So I have a question for you. What nutrients listed on the nutrition label should be limited? We have added sugars. We want to limit these because eating too much added sugars makes it difficult to meet our nutrition needs within your calorie requirements. Want to limit saturated fats because saturated fats and trans fats are linked to increased risks of heart disease. Want to limit, limit sodium because high levels of sodium can add up to high blood pressure. And then you also want to limit trans fats. So another question for you, what nutrients on the nutri nutrition label should you be sure to get enough of? So if we choose to eat more fruits and veggies, we'll get more fiber, potassium, vitamin D, calcium, and iron. And we need those to maintain good health and help reduce your risk of certain health problems like osteoporosis and anemia. And on the nutrition label, you'll see a percent daily value. So this shows how much nutrients are in a serving of food that's contributing to a total daily diet. This can be used to evaluate how a particular food fits into your daily meal plan um, because these daily values are for the entire day and not just for one meal or snack. Um, they go by average levels of nutrients for a person eating 2,000 calories a day. So for 
example, um, a food item with 5% daily value of fats provides 5% of the total fat in a person consuming those 2,000 calories in a day, what they should eat. Um, and then just to note your daily value, it doesn't have to add up to 100% each day. And then one more pop question quiz. What nutrients do you want a low percent daily value for? And what nutrients do you want a high percent daily value for? So you low, you'll want saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium, and high in vitamins, minerals, and fiber. And then you'll also notice there's a footnote at the bottom of the nutrition label. This is this explains the meaning of percent daily value, just to help you understand the context of a total daily diet. So now that we're experts at reading nutrition labels, we're going to do a little bit of an exercise and, and look at a nutrition label. So how many servings are in our how many servings per container are in this food? So it's eight servings, so right at the top there. And is this high or low in sodium? So it's 7%, so it's considered low. And how many calories per container? So per container is the is the buzzword there. So it would be the whole container. So there's eight servings. So we'll times that by 230 calories, and that will total 1,840 total calories for this food. And then what is the serving size? So it's two thirds of a cup. And then is this high or low in vitamin D? So it's 10%, so neither high or low, just kind of hanging out right there in the middle. And then what is the percent daily value of calcium? It's right underneath that, um, the vitamin D, it's 20% for calcium. Just a couple more here. How many grams of protein are in one serving? So three grams, whoops. And I just gave you that answer here. Is it high or low in added sugars? So since it's 20%, this would be considered high. And then how many calories per day is the percent daily values based on? You can see that all the way down at the bottom, it's 2,000. So when you read the ingredient list, the ingredients are listed in descending order by weight or amount. So foods more with more than one ingredient must have an ingredient list um, on the label. And usually they're just right under the nutrition label. So here are some common terms listed out that you may see on packaging, and we're just going to see what they really mean. So the first one is calorie free. So you could see here that it doesn't necessarily mean that it's zero calories. It just means that it's less than five calories per serving. Low calorie is 40 calories or less per serving. Low cholesterol is 20 milligrams or less and two grams of saturated fat or less per serving. Low sodium is 140 milligrams or less of, per, of sodium per serving. Reduced, um, it's at least 25% less of the specified nutrient or cal calories than usual product. Good source of dot, dot, dot. Um, so this provides at least 10 to 19% of the daily value of a particular vitamin or nutrient per serving. And it's, if it's um, Labeled as excellent source of, it provides at least 20% or more of the daily value of a particular vitamin or nutrient per serving. And if it's saying it's fat free or sugar free, it's less than a half gram of fat um, or sugar per serving. So we're going to talk about portion distortion. Um, over the past 20 years, the average portion size has grown so much and has changed what Americans think is normal. So again, this is called portion distortion. 
So as you can see um, on your screen here, the portion size with soda can really increase our calories. So there's a 48 calorie difference between a can and a cup of soda and 145 calories between a bottle and a cup. So here are cheeseburger and fries. So you could see the difference of 466 calories um, from when uh, cheeseburger and fries were introduced um, at a fast food, food restaurant 20 years ago from today. Um, and an interesting note that I wanted to add here is that the portion sizes offered by fast food chains or fast food restaurants are about two to five times larger than again when they were first introduced. So something interesting to think about there. And then with spaghetti and meatballs, there's a calorie difference of 525 between a cup of pasta with sauce and three meatballs um, between today from 1,025 calories. So this kind of goes to show how much our plates or bowls have grown over the years. And then between a cup and a, uh, a cup of coffee and a large coffee, of course, with cream and sugar, there's a 240 calorie difference. So again, this just goes to show how our, our portions grown with, with our plates, our, our bowls, and in this case, our cups. And with popcorn, there's a 360 calorie difference between 20 years ago and today. Um, and with all these examples, again, our plates, our bowls, and our cup size, it really plays a role into our portion since we are typically filling up our plate or our cup when we serve ourselves and not just kind of getting a little snack on them. So um, what can we do better to manage our portions? Um, so we can be aware of the suitable serving sizes, don't eat straight from the container, use measuring cups or spoons, use a food diary, use the my plate as a guide. So that is half a plate of fruits and vegetables, a quarter of a plate of grains, and then the last quarter of the plate of protein. You want to use smaller dinnerware and use visual objects to represent the serving sizes. And you could do, use this as, as a portion size guide. So one cup of dry cereal um, usually is a size of a fist. Half a cup of cooked rice or pasta is the size of a light bulb. One medium fruit is the size of a baseball. Three ounces of fish, uh, a size of a checkbook. And two tablespoons of peanut butter is about the size of a golf ball. So if you are struggling to manage your portions, you can use a food journal as a tool to help you with that. It does have, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just somewhere where you can write down how much you ate, what you ate, when you ate, where you ate, and, and why you ate. Um, and if you notice that you tend to eat too much when you're not hungry, such as out of boredom, um, try to do something else like going for a walk, cleaning up something, or just simply taking a drink of water. So on this slide that you see on your screen here, there are a few ways that we can manage our portion sizes. So you can avoid eating in front of a TV or computer, avoid second helpings, eat slowly, freeze your leftovers, measure treats and eat at regular intervals, and pre-portion snacks on hand. And then lastly here, we know that ordering out a ordering takeout or ordering delivery is such an easy option and necessary when we're just not feeling like cooking, but try these tips out when those situations do happen. So you wanna order larger beverages, eat half now and then save the rest for, for leftovers later, have an appetizer as your meal and share your meal with, with others. So that does lead us to the end of the presentation here. If you do have any questions, please send them into our wellness email um, and then we will get those questions answered for you. Thank you for listening today and I hope you have a great rest of your day.